Hello everyone, it's Yin Tan here, and today I'm going to be presenting a Rome in effectively full with commentary. I hope this will help people who are trying to strike out on their own in solo PvP to be able to find content for themselves. But if you want to skip all that and just watch the fights, there are timestamps in the comments below. Now, obviously the first part of going on a solo PvP roam is picking a ship, and in this case I picked out the Griffin Navy issue. The aim of this fit is to simply use the double webs, scram and TD to establish range control, and then just hold the ship in position whilst you slowly pick away at them from range. And after hearing that, I'm fairly sure some people in the audience will have gone, wait, isn't that just a Kaldari Navy hook build but with less DPS and less EHP? However, the Griffin Navy has one hidden advantage, and that's that it's universally seen as such a shit ship that pretty much everyone will engage it. Anyway, so after buying my ship from Jitter, I then headed to the closest faction warfare space to that area, which is Tama. And here is where I reveal that the title of the video is a tiny little bit of a lie. I'm not actually going to be helping you to find fights in EVE, because finding fights in EVE is relatively easy. There's nothing stopping me from simply engaging and quote-unquote fighting this gate camp with my frigate. However, I would most assuredly lose, and probably not have that much fun doing so. Instead, what I'm going to try and explain is how you pick your fights properly in Faction Warfare. And a big part of that is knowing when you can't win a fight and warping away before the fight is brought to you. And a big part of that is warping away from fights that you absolutely can't win before they're able to lock you down and kill you. And as you can see, it's actually relatively difficult for a gate camp to catch a frigate that has a decent enough agility. So as long as you're not running around in a plated Punisher or something similar, you should be able to get past most gate camps like this relatively easily. So seeing all this hostile activity, I decided to go to a place where I would be relatively safe, and that is a faction warfare complex. And these are effectively small pockets of space that are locked off by an acceleration gate, which only provides access to certain types of ships. In this case, I went to the novice one, which only allows faction and T1 frigates. Now one of the main plus sides that you should always be taking advantage of when using a complex like this is the fact that your d-scanner still works whilst inside the complex. This effectively allows you to quote unquote see outside of the pocket and identify what ships are on the in gate that may potentially come through and attempt to fight you. However, after a few minutes of sitting in the complex and waiting for a challenger to approach, it seemed that no one was coming, my d-scan was still empty so I decided to move systems and see if there were other people in nearby areas. During this little adventure, I'm continually trying to pay attention to my D-scan in order to see what's going on and to try and find where people are. And whilst I'm able to see a couple of ships and I do spot people going from gate to gate, none of them seem particularly willing to engage me. I am, however, during this time able to use my D-scan to find a bunch of abandoned drones and just start killing them all because I don't believe in recycling and you shouldn't either. Unfortunately, even this wasn't enough to really drag up any action, and the only ships that I was really seeing at this point in my roam were Gamas, and Gamas are ships that I don't want to fight, as they primarily rely on missile damage, which means that my tracking disruptor would be ineffective against them. After around 20 minutes of just hanging around in this backwater system waiting to see if anything would happen, I decided to go back into Tama again and see if anyone else had turned up in the novice complex I would sat in previously. Fortunately, my luck would turn around here, and I would see a Federation Navy Comet on D-Scan, and given that there's nothing near the novice outpost at this point, I have to assume then that he is within the complex. This puts me in an interesting position, as in Faction Warfare, the defender can always choose the range at which the fight starts, as the person entering the complex will always land at roughly the same spot, allowing the defender to position themselves appropriately at range from that point. And as you can see here, the Federation Navy Comet was right at zero on that, attempting to use their blasters to beat down the opponent immediately upon landing. Fortunately, I was able to heat my afterburner and react fast enough to pull some range before the Federation Navy Comet was able to land his own web on me, which meant that using my TD and double webs, I was able to firmly establish range control in the fight. However, it was at this point that I realized that the Federation Navy Comet had dropped EC-300 drones instead of the combat drones that I'd expected him to. And this presents a two-pronged problem to me. Not only will if the EC-300 jams land my scram drop, meaning that the Federation Navy Comet can just warp away and leave the fight that he is currently losing, but also it will make my webs and TD drop off as well, which could potentially allow the Federation Navy Comet to get in close to me and start applying those heated blaster shots to me, which I will not survive very long under. 
I'd estimate roughly 10 to 15 seconds, given that the Federation Navy Comet can reach upwards of 300 DPS if properly fit. Unfortunately, this added pressure, along with a lot of heat management and other issues, meant that I wasn't actually able to even hold Scram on this target for the entirety of the fight, and he simply warped off. Whilst I was trying to change my default keep at range to make this less of a possibility later on in the fight. Say la vie. I'm sure any competent solo PvP pilots watching this probably want to strangle me, and trust me, I wanted to strangle myself after that happened. But in lieu of asphyxiation, what I decided to do instead was dock up, repair my ship, and move to a different war zone, this time moving all the way over to Huola, which is near Amar. Unfortunately, Huola had no novice complexes spawned. If there are none in your overview, you can actually use your probe scanner to check to see if there are some spawned, as they will appear in here rather than the overview if no one else has warped to them. Once someone has warped to them in order to quote-unquote activate the beacon, however, it will be visible on the overview for everyone else. But in this case, it was a simple factor of there not being any to begin with. So I moved over to the next system, Cormonan. Entering this system, I could immediately see that it was much more active than the previous ones, as local was relatively full and D-Scan also had a lot of random ships on it. And whilst these random ships weren't things I was intending to fight, I knew that if I went to the novice complex, it's likely that there would be something inside it, as the war zone seemed relatively active. And that assumption turned out to be entirely correct, as I immediately spotted an executioner on D-Scan, which is something that my ship is incredibly well suited to being able to fight as long as it can get tackle on the ship, as the Executioner is a relatively fast frigate and can run away from most things if it's well piloted. When I land in here, the first thing that I immediately notice is the Executioner's at range, and that to me implies that he is using beams, which is very worrying for me, as it means that I need to be able to catch this frigate quickly, or else my TD will be relatively ineffective in stopping DPS, it will just force him to swap to a lower DPS ammo, and in a straight-up 1v1 fight without using range control, the Griffin Navy will lose. As a result of that, I heat my afterburner and my webs, and I try and land that initial tackle on him when he goes in himself to try and get the initial tackle on me. And fortunately, he strays a little too close in this, coming under 15 kilometers and allowing my webs to start to apply. And whilst he tries to pull off here, you can see that pretty quickly I'm able to catch up and start locking him down with my scram and once that's in place, he effectively has no way of pulling away from me, as it turns off his micro-warp drive, which is his only propulsion. I also make a pretty critical error here by allowing my afterburner to burn out, but fortunately, as he doesn't have his own afterburner, it doesn't actually impact the fight that much, as I still have the speed control with my double webs. Still, as you can see, it's hardly like the fight is even won at that point, as I still have to take my exile in order to be sure that I can survive the DPS that the Executioner is throwing back at me, as the Griffin Navy issue is still a very flimsy hull. But after a little longer, and actually remembering to change to close range ammo, because apparently I can do nothing right in this video, victory is finally mine, and I have the first kill in my Griffin Navy issue. Anyway, so following this fight, I have to go through all the general motions of resetting. So I've got to go through and get more nanite paste, I've got to go through and repair my heat damage, um, if I was expecting to go out for more than an hour, I'd probably have to go and get more drugs as well. Although fortunately in this case, I didn't have to do that. And then following that, I returned to the system that I was previously in, and went to one of the novice complexes and sat around in it for a little while to see if someone would come to me. However, as seemed to be a running theme of the night, no one was willing to actually enter a plex and engage me. So I ended up moving out and going to another system where I saw a slasher on uh, D-Scan. And the Slasher itself is actually a really interesting ship to try and fight, because at this point I'm trying to figure out if the Slasher inside is going to be a kiting fit or a brawling fit, because both of them are used. It's not quite the same as other ships which tend to have very static fits, like the Tormentor or Atron. As you can see in something that's a little amusing, it's actually the same person who I just killed in an Executioner in the same system with a different fit. And fortunately for me, the game plan of the Griffin Navy issue doesn't really change depending on whether you're fighting a kiting or brawling fit. All you want to do is just land, scram, double web, TD, and just hope you can kill them before they can kill you. As you can see, after my double webs land, I have complete speed control of the matchup, so I can just sit at whatever position I want to. And because the slasher relies on auto cannons for its DPS, as he seems to be some sort of brawling fit, he lacks the projection to be able to actively deal with me, which is something I explored in a video earlier this month, which you can take a look at if you click on the card in the top right. Hell yeah. 
Anyway, at this point in the fight, I switch to Javelin, because I believe that I'm being tracking disrupted, uh, because I haven't actually checked my weapon range. If I'd done this earlier, I would have noticed that I was being optimal range disrupted, and that's why my shots were missing. Not what I thought, which was that the slasher was being able to somehow get underneath my guns. After I do finally figure out what's going on though, it's a pretty simple swap to Thorium, and from there I'm able to whittle him down. So let me just put on a little bit of smooth jazz here whilst we wait for him to die. Can your heart stand the shocking fact about grave robbers from outer space? So after notching up this second kill mark on this Griffin Navy issue, I go back and do the same as before, I repair, I make sure I've got enough ammo, all the usual stuff. And then after that I just start roaming around and seeing what I can find, and I start to see a Damovic on D-Scan quite regularly. And that's an interesting fight for me to potentially take, as the Damovic relies on the Disintegrators, and Disintegrators are particularly weak to tracking disruptors as disintegrators, unlike other weapons, don't have fall off, so if you're able to bring that optimal range to below where you are in comparison to them, their guns will simply stop firing and they will lose the ramp up that they had previously had. As you can see, once I land in the complex and see the Damovic, he's already pulled a lot of range, and this makes me think that he's probably going to be some sort of kite fit, so I turn on my afterburner and preheat my webs and scrams with the hope of surprising him and managing to land something as he tries to burn in for that initial tackle. And here is the exact moment that I realise how badly I've fucked up, as rather than trying to jink away and use his momentum to carry him out of those webs, uh, the Damovic instead turns in and turns on two newts, and you can see just how quickly this evaporates my capacitor. And in the meanwhile, my, you know, railgun is basically doing nothing to him. He's able to very easily tank the DPS that I'm putting out, whilst he focuses on my ECM drone so that I can't get away. At this point in the fight, I know I have pretty much already lost, and my hope is that he drops Scram and, you know, somehow lets me escape. Unfortunately, that doesn't happen, however, and I am, you know, evacuated quite forcefully from my ship. So I warp off and leave the requisite good fight in local. Anyway, obviously with no ship, that pretty much ends the roam, so I decide to head off to Amar and call it quits for the day. Not because I'm particularly mad, I'm just, you know, I only wanted to play for about an hour, and uh, at this point I was about 47 minutes into the roam. But I just wanted to try and give people an example of what, you know, a short gameplay PvP session looks like if I fast forward through the boring bits of trying to roam around and find fights and explain what I'm doing. I want to give a quick shout out, by the way, at the end of this episode to Lucas, who suggested in the May update that I do a video like this. I'd like to thank everyone for their suggestions, and I'm going to see what I can do about making some of these things happen. And make sure you keep them coming, I'm always interested to know what you guys want to hear from me. Alright, have a good day and fly smart.